Right, okay everyone, um, welcome back, sorry we missed you for a couple of days, things were mayhem around here and uh, just didn't really get much time to do any filming, so uh, with a couple of breakdowns and stuff in the past week as well and I was occupied with them, I didn't get the chance to film many of them, I started filming a small bit of one but uh, I'll fill you in all of it now anyway so we'll see the the whole goings on and all of that but we might make two videos out of it just give a rundown on what's been going on so um we were working away i think we've maybe four thousand a bit over four thousand bales done now so uh, tipping away nicely um under no huge panic and uh, getting through jobs so it, 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 it suits us nicely to be here but um i would like maybe to have another thousand done and it would lighten the load for the rest of the year so because if we were about halfway there it'd be great but i will say our, there's a lot more stuff in our bales uh this year compared to uh previous years so that's bringing our bale count down uh a bit as well so what we'll do with that in time uh, remains to be seen but anyway um this tractor I had a um, we had a, a bush fix on this or a, a, we, we were um, a field repair uh, the water pump just seized in it uh, totally unexpectedly um, one day so we had to change the water pump and that in the field but um, to be fair we, we escaped away pretty uh, handy with it um, I got that finished and she's been uh, flying away ever since so this tractor has been working away without fault whatsoever. It needs um, the seat is going down very quickly, and so the, the seat needs a um, switch needs to be done on that for keeping the air in it. But this tractor is actually going to come up for sale, so maybe in the next two months that way. But um, it remains to be seen. I have to go and look at another machine first, and then if I do buy that, then this one will be coming up for sale. So. Yeah, if I know a couple of you have asked about it before, then yes, it will be available in the next while. With or without the loader, but obviously I will be looking for more money for it with the loader on it. So if somebody is interested in this, you can contact me. Uh, we'll get a couple of photos of it and all the rest of it. And we'll see how we get on. I picked this up off a local um, engineering firm. It's a, um, a double bale handler, but they put a bar on it, like our own one to carry uh, three bales and it's a very nice one indeed it's very well made um and it, it tilts an awful lot towards the tractor when you lift it which i like so when you have the tree on really your weight is really pressing on this bar um you know there's no fear of the bale falling backwards so if anybody is looking for a, a bale handler give these lads a shot a shout and maybe they can do something for you but it is a lovely bale handler to use. Um, the pipes are short in it as well, so if you're backing into the stack, you're not too inclined to catch the, the bales behind you. Uh, like you can see, it's, it's very well made. It's reinforced in all the points. It would need some reinforcing. Uh, very strong machine indeed. But it's, it's a good job, a uh, very good job, you know. We've had several double bale handlers over the years. Um, between that and our own one, mm, I don't know which I, I wouldn't take personal preference. They're both maybe as good as the other. Uh, I would say maybe my own one is a little bit more forgiving with uh, bales that have sagged a small bit. You don't have to get your spacings just as right with it with the bales if there's a bit of a gap between them or they're right next to each other this one will pick them up but um it's true it's 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 wider even looking at it here now it is a bit wider but that's a nice that's a that's a strong strong bale handler i do like it so we'll go on further we're going to talk about the coon so here she is looking a bit dirty but um We'll give a front full run down through it now to see what we think of it and you know how it's performed so far and what I'd like about it and what I don't like about it and what I'd like to change but I'm getting a real handle on it now but I'm I'm not just there yet. Um our pickup and rotor is just simply 
unbelievable. It's a weapon of a thing to take in grass. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant in that aspect. It, it just, you can't fault it. And the chop on it is unbelievable. Um, I am a bit sorry I didn't go for a thousand speed PTO. Uh, the lad says I didn't really need it, but I am a bit sorry I didn't go for a thousand speed PTO. They don't sell, I think they said they've only ever sold one with a thousand, but you see with these tractors you are able to horse on a bit faster and your speeds are increasing and slowing down. Like I'm trying to drive at the limit of the machine all the time. You know, I suppose that's the wrong way of wording it. I'm trying to drive to the limit of the conditions all the time. And the thousand speed gearbox allowed you to when you just had that little bit too much grass going in at the end you were able to get over that two seconds of a big load whereas with the 540 you have a lot more torque going through the drive line so you just get that little problem there but it's just one thing I, if i was changing again i probably would go for the thousand speed pto um now there are several things you can do to help that and we have helped it but it's um it's more of an annoyance than a problem and it's more me as the problem than than the machine if i just slow down that ever so slight bit when i'm coming to the end of the bale it'll help the situation but i am used of the thousand speed box and it's hard to change your mind i think i have it now because i'm thinking about driving a welder baler and if i think about driving a welder baler then i'm driving this one I'm getting more output out of this one if I drive it like a welder baler. There is no forgiveness if if you jam it, it there is a crazy amount of stuff inside in the baler like that. It, it won't just keep opening the door like some uh, other ones do. It, there is unbelievable pressure on when that gets to that sort of a situation. Um, moving up here, as you can see I was using some net because I was baling some hay. I'm still on my first roll of net. Everybody so far has chose to put this on. Um, I've asked, do you want to try it? And they say yes. So I suppose next year will be the real test of how many people go back to it. Anyone that's open bail so far tells me they like it, but uh, next year will be the real trial of it. Love the auto greaser. Um, at the start, I was finding this awkward, but obviously I just know what to do now and to root it. So. I'm finding that quick and easy. And also, it's very easy putting it in to the baler and it doesn't give much grief at all, at all, at all. It'll give a little bit of grief, um, which I learned in the last day or two, but that was that's my first bit of uh, grief I've had with the machine since I got it. You'll actually see now when I open the door, I bet you there'll be some of this wrapped around the roller. But um, we'll explain why that's, that was happening all along. But like none of them are flawless, and, and but this pretty much is close to flawless, to be fair. This system, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I couldn't fault it. And it's very quick to change from knit to barrel wrap. Very, very quick indeed. I don't know what the others are like because I never had another barrel wrap machine, but these are very quick indeed. So looking in here, it looks like it builds up a crazy amount of dust, but like if you had to roll a net up there, it actually wouldn't. That's where you hold your spare amount of net. Um, it doesn't hold stuff in really awkward places that much. You know, it's very easy to blow it down. I blew it down maybe two or three days ago with an air or a leaf blower, and it pretty much cleaned the whole machine. I think here was the only place I had to dig stuff out of, and also another place I'm going to show you, but... Um, that part of it is very good to stay clean. I'm impressed with that part of it. There isn't near as much cleaning as, as I used to have. Going back here, I love the plastic on the back. I absolutely love the way you put it on. You have your roll here, grab it, throw it on, your roll at the other side. It's quick, it's really, really quick. And if you do manage to put a bale out without plastic on it or without wrapping it, you know, without a, or sorry, without net or wrapping it, it will land here and you will be able to wrap it and put it off. So it's it is good in that aspect. To be fair, you again, I can't fault it that way at all, at all, at all. So here is 
this control box and just not sold on it. I just I'm getting used to it, but it's taken me an awful lot longer than I would like to get used to it. Now I'm sure other people would find this an absolute doddle, but I just get a little bit confused. For example, we we'll go in here now and you change your um, wrap programs. So basically that's it now to not wrap at all. And you go in here then and it's set to six layers. So you need to press this green plus now, to, or this green escape route to get back. And now the bailer is set to put on six layers of wrap. But what was happening to me a lot of the time is I'll go over here now and I've set to four. Like, I, somebody made a, a very good point the other day, it was actually my father, that it's a touchscreen monitor, but not everything is touchscreen on it, so you should be able to press here and change your cycles, but you can only press along here, so you need to do the arrows to move along to the, all the different wrap, what you can get it to, to wrap the bales. And then if you press this one, so we'll say, I, I don't want to wrap this bale, no, I'm bailing here and you see this symbol your mind automatically thinks okay back to the baler but that's not after working though that's still on six layers and you have the same situation in here when you reset the amount of bales you had in a job you know now there'll be bale totals and all of these because i was bailing small bits the last day or so so i um i just totaled them all up along that way but you know, you can move on to eight there again, press the bailer back when you're still on your, your number seven count. And again, that's not touchscreen, so you should be able to go in there, change your counts. If I can press that there now, and then go in, and if there was like a, a an OK button or, or enter or something like that, instead of the symbols, if it just, even if, the, if it said uh, enter there now or something like that, you know, and, and if that said back and if that said clear, or, the, obviously the arrows are pretty self-explanatory but that, that just isn't that straightforward this is the change between knit and plastic I don't mind that that's uh, that doesn't affect me at all that's again that's that's clear like that's blatantly clear uh, the spanner is in here to change settings again easy enough to be fair not something I take a whole pile of notes of so right this is a perfect example now of a um, there's a fault there. Now the fault is easy to understand once you know what's going on. Basically grass builds up in an area at the back of the machine. You need to get out and clean it out, right? Okay. But that buzzer is very annoying. Now, I do get the point of the buzzer being annoying. If it's annoying, then you're gonna find a solution to the problem. But, for example, if I'm going down the row, I'm just ready to make a bail and I'm coming to a stop especially with the Vario box and I block it I set off the slip clutch it wants to put on the NRF film but it can't because the PTO has turned off so it you know the chamber isn't turning to take in the, the this and it will continue beeping like this until you start the issue so it's 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 actually distracting how loud and annoying that beeper is in my opinion anyway I don't it's very very annoying I, I find it like if if you're trying to start a problem and more often than not you're also on the phone as well which I suppose you shouldn't be but it's the reality of using machinery like and, and running a business like this if you're in a field lads are going to be ringing you up you are going to plug the machine in because you're not concentrating fully on what you're doing and this is beeping in the background like that and it's extremely annoying if it beep a couple of times and stop then maybe it might be better but i can see why it would continue beeping because it's like it's telling you you have to sort this problem out before you can continue so we're here in our manual screen now and this is how we do things manually now I would like for there to be a button just to do everything to throw out the bale. 
even give me give me all these options but in, in a different location so like this this button opens the door then i have to press this one to lift the, the first load arm and then the, that one to lift the second load arm onto the chamber then i have to level the bale and then you can press the wrap one and then you have to press that to cut them and then that to drop them off so you pretty much press every button along there to uh, do your motions but if i press this one and it opened the door and transferred the bale as well now i know at times you're going to want to just open the door or just transfer the bale but give me that option but also give me a quick option that i don't have to so we'll close that down again now this, is, this is going to beep again here because we need to clean off our door i can feel it's still pressurizing the system is trying to close the door right so if, you, if that gave me an option a trans a transfer option and if it gave me those options as well but it's like you have to well that's still flashing you have to wait for it to do that right, that's doing now the door is up now i can press this one now i can press this one now i can press that one just i i do find it could it could be a little bit better there now i do know if you put it into auto that will do a transfer sequence you know that that'll complete the transfer sequence she's going to close the door now and bring down our our, our leathers but i just find it could be a little bit simpler laid out like i mean you can turn the two uh, satellites here for road transport but it's, it's something you never need to do so that that button shouldn't even be in that menu because it's just confusing the whole thing i think or, uh, I, I, uh, I don't know whether I'm coming across right or wrong or in explaining it, but it's just a little bit. It's not for, we'll say, I can't ring somebody and say, will you sit up in the bailer there for an hour and bail away? Because they're going to have to phone me and say, there's a picture on the screen and it says this, that, or the other. And I can't remember what that picture is then, but. I know in time it'll come to me, like the CVXs and stuff like that, but at the moment I'm not 100% there and it's very hard for me to let somebody else off with the machine because I won't be able to give them the answer they need to continue going. So to get back out of manual, we're in here and here's our work screen and I don't mind the work screen at all. I find the work screen okay, but again here, this should be pressable to change our uh, bail counts this is pressable to change the amount of nick going on it so if that's pressable then surely that should be pressable and also he isn't pressable either they put on this nifty feature here where it automatically drops the floor when the clutch goes off so you literally cut back your ribs knock off your pdo put your pdo go on again pull up your ribs it lifts the floor it lifts the lives of the way you go uh, this is very <laughs> sorry that is a very good feature to the machine <coughs> now we're going to go into the back of the machine and give a look so you can climb in here you just need to put this bag all the way back to get in or what i do sometimes is i just climb in over there and then you're into the into the chamber so as you can see we have a bit of uh, plastic wrapped around the roller here that needs to be cut off and uh, cleaned off um, you shouldn't really leave it there, I'd imagine you should cut it off when it happens, but if the pressure is on, you stay moving and cut it off when you get a chance. But you, as you can see, it's only one side, so you can still throw with the bale and, and wrap it and, and built away. Um, so we had our uh, little errors code up on the screen there to show us that um, the door wasn't closed fully. And this is where this builds up here. I can't quite figure out whether the grass is getting stuck here or coming out here. I think some of it comes out through this panel here. But literally, it's a, it is a two-second job. Like, you just need to pull off that bit of grass. And away you go again. And it's, it's, it is simple, to be fair. It is annoying, but it is simple. It's not a, a big job to sort out. But you get the old error code up on the screen there, maybe. It just depends on the grass. 
you might get it twice a day or you might get it three times a day or whatever like you know but it's it's not a big deal so having given all that summary what do i think i think it's a step forward it's definitely a step forward um from previous i think i do need to get more accustomed to the control box but i would like if there was a different control box on it i do need to get more accustomed to the control box and i either need to get the slip clutch looked at or i need to change my driving style because i can get big numbers out of this machine in an hour i've got 77 bales out of this in an hour but it's it's the consistency i'm after i want to get 70 i want to get 60 bales an hour every hour out of it and that's what you'd be after when you're out it's fine i don't mind in the world when there isn't pressure on but it's when you're pressure on like just some days you might only have 150 bales to make another day you could have six seven hundred and if you have a bit of hay thrown into the mix you don't want to be out all night at the tin so it's just that little bit of consistency i'm after and it's i'm when i told myself remember you're driving a welder because i had a welder in the past that has improved me an awful lot and it's just these small little things and it's also i suppose which is not a help is we're bailing massive crops that are extremely dry normally when when you're bailing massive crops they're wet there's moisture in them and you will bail that stuff easier it's when the huge volumes of grass that are bone dry is very hard on slip clutches and things like that so as the year progresses that might get easier i don't know i'm going to investigate into it a little bit more but basically my summary after the first cut of grass is would i go for one of these again yes is there a couple of little things i want to change yes the monitor definitely i i don't like the monitor at all but i will get used to it one thing maybe is i'm relatively young i don't know how maybe somebody in their 50s or 60s would get accustomed to it i'm sure they wouldn't time but it would take a long time and they would get very annoyed with it in the middle i do think it's um i wouldn't say it's letting the machine down totally not at all and 95 percent of the time you're not the monitor has nothing to do with your input but it's when something goes wrong for example that um that error i showed you on the screen for the bail on the the wrapper so really and truly what you should do is when that comes up you can manually put down the transfer arms wrap the bail that's on it the bail that is now being made in the chamber make that put it out do not drive forward wrap that bail throw it off climb into the chamber clean it off close it down and away you go but i've done silly things in the middle that <laughs> have hampered that and it's just made it more difficult and it's made a problem where there shouldn't have been a problem but it, it is me is the problem i'm not 100 percent with the with the the box you know whereas if i stopped and thought about it for a second maybe i would may it would speed me up a small bit but um that's where we're at at the moment so i have felt more confident in the last two to three days with it than i did before that uh, before that again i was very confident with it and i was i was flying away but i think i'm definitely 95 to 98 percent of the way there i just need that little bit of finesse to get my full full output out of it um you need to you need to hammer on when you're at this kind of work and you need to get throughput out of them so you can't be every five or six bales you can't be sitting off clutches or fooling with a control box that you're it, that it's your fault that you can't uh, manage so i just need to stop and think and uh, get myself a little bit more accustomed to it i don't know i just have a little bit of a mental block when it comes to it so but we are getting there we are nearly nearly there